Welcome again. Uh, today, I would like to briefly introduce to you the, the concept of sequential seeding in uh, social networks, together with some main findings from our evaluation of this approach in various types of networks. Uh, so I would like to start with saying a few words about what is influence spread in social networks. So influence spread is a phenomena where each of us is influenced by other people in order to change our political preferences, switch to other products, change our beliefs or lifestyle, buy some products and so on. And people around us, our neighbors, our relations, uh, influence our choices, our beliefs, uh, our opinions. Uh, and our behavior much, much more than uh, we think and, uh, and we try to understand, uh, understand them. So, uh, as you probably guess, since this is so important and people influence us, uh, many people and companies are very much interested in maximizing their influence especially now in social media era when they can pretty easily uh, get to everyone. Uh, there are many ways to, to do that, so to maximize the influence, uh, but the most obvious and most effective uh, one is to find people who are most influencing and somehow convince them to promote our company, our system of beliefs, our values, our product, or to promote us if we, if we are, for example, a politician, a musician, or some artist. Uh, usually the convincing uh, takes form or for, form of, for example, paying someone to, to promote uh, our product. This is the situation which we, uh, which we know and pretty much understand. Of course, uh, not everyone, not every company can afford uh, celebrities and there is less celebrities than uh, companies. So we need to figure out how to uh, start and run the spreading campaign. So in general, when we, when we want to run or uh, simulate the spreading process in networks, uh, we have a few steps to do. First, uh, we need to find nodes, nodes, so for example, people, uh, which will initiate our spreading uh, process. They are called um, seeds. And since we cannot afford celebrities, for, for example, to choose them, we need to rank existing nodes or people in the network according to some user importance measure or user influence measure. There are a few of them, for example, degree, patron, casual, uh, and so on. Next, depending on our seeding budget, that is, for example, so the, the amount of resources we have to, to, conv to, to convince our seed nodes. And this can be, for example, money. So how much we can pay someone uh, to, to promote, for example, uh, our product. But also this can be a time, for example, how much time we can spend uh, to convince someone to change his political opinion or how much time we can spend for someone to uh, change his beliefs uh, or, or something like that. So, uh, so depending on, on our seeding budget, we select some number of nodes, uh, usually starting from, from the uh, top uh, of our uh, ranking, as, as we can see here. Uh, and next, we activate all seed nodes and observe the spreading process. In, in terms of activate, I mean, for example, pay them, sign contract, and they start uh, working. Uh, in our toy example, you can see here, uh, we have budget to convince uh, six social media uh, users to our product, and we select them based on the degree value. 
Thus, in this case, nodes one, two, three, four, six, and seven, uh, we select them because they have the highest value of uh, degree measure. And we start the spreading process simulated in this case in, with an independent cascade model where each newly activated node, newly activated person, has one and only one chance to activate or convince uh, each of their neighbor, uh, depending on the propagation probability. This propagation uh, probability reflects our influence on, on other people. So, for example, if, uh, if I'm, I'm trying to convince my wife, I have much higher chance on, of convincing her then if I would like to convince, for example, my coworker or the person I know from the gym or something like that. Uh, so uh, just after two steps of the process, uh, it ends. Uh, since we do not have any node which can, can be activated, which can activate its neighbor. And Finally, we, in this case, end up with 18 active nodes in, in this our small networks. Um, so this is the traditional approach used, used for like 40 years uh, or 50 years. Uh, but uh, a few years ago, we asked four years ago, actually, we asked ourselves, what if instead of activating all nodes at once, so in we call it in single stage, we'll activate them in a, a sequence. So basically, instead of paying all the cele celebra celebrities at once, uh, we'll hire and pay them in a sequence according to our uh, needs. Uh, so let's look uh, into that uh, concept. So the beginning of the spreading process look exactly the same. So we rank, uh, we rank our nodes depending on some measure, but instead of spending the whole budget at once and activating all seed nodes at once, we activate just one node and save the rest of the budget for next iteration of this or next iterations of the spreading process. So in our toy example, instead of activating nodes seven, three, four, one, two, and six, like we did before, we activate just node seven. And because node seven has the highest degree and is connected to node two, it was able to activate node two. And here we can see the highest potential of sequential seeding. That is, if we wait just a bit, some nodes for whom in traditional approach, so in, in this previous approach, we would spend our resources and pay them, will be convinced naturally by their neighbors. And we can spend our resources to activate those nodes who might not be activated by their neighbors. So, in this case, uh, we actually already saved uh, the bus, some part of our budget. Uh, so in the second iteration, we activate the next, uh, the next active node from the top of our ranking, which is uh, node number three. And once again, node three was able to activate uh, node one and six, which uh, were seed nodes in single stage uh, CD. So in the third iteration, we activate the next node active node from the top of our ranking. This time it is node number four. And we can see that uh, we have used 50%, so three nodes uh, of our resources. And the rest of seed nodes, so one, two, and six, which we uh, had as a seed nodes before was convinced by the neighbors instead of uh, our money. Thus, thus in, in our toy example, we can use our safe resources to activate next not active node with the highest degree. Uh, for example, so in this case, node uh, 24. So 
Node 24 was the next in the ranking and we activated. Uh, this allow us to access the new part of network, which uh, we were not able to activate using the traditional approach. So as you can see here, we in the previous case, we were not able to activate this part of the network. And in this case, uh, we could do that because we have some safe budget. Uh, and we can use the remaining part of our budget to activate new regions uh, in social uh, networks. So as you can see, right now we were able to activate th those two nodes, which we were not able to do that previously. And we continue this process until we use all our seeding budget. Uh, and there is no one else, or there is no one else to activate. Uh, and this time, the whole process lasted six iteration, uh, so it was longer, uh, but we were able to activate 24 nodes uh, in the network. So summing up this, uh, this uh, introduction, the main difference between single stage seeding and sequential seeding are uh, in single stage seeding, we activate all seeds um, at once at the beginning, while in sequential seeding, uh, we activate nodes in a sequence, uh, depending on, let's say, our, our needs or the areas of the network which are most beneficial for us. Uh, so in the first case, uh, we activated nodes 7, 3, 4, 1, 2, and 6. While in the second case, uh, since nodes 1, 2, and 6 were already activated by their neighbors, so convinced by their neighbors, we could afford additional three uh, seed nodes, uh, namely 24, 11, and 22. And thanks to that, we were able to activate 24 nodes instead of uh, 18 nodes. So we, uh, our coverage, our reach, uh, it's much better because we was, were able to uh, go with our message to higher number of people. Uh, of course, this is just a toy example to give uh, you a general under understanding of how the sequential seeding uh, approach looks like. Uh, so let's see how this approach, per approach performs in real network. So, to do that, we have evaluated our approach on uh, 15 real networks, including a vari variety of parameters and user important measures. And we found out that we were right. So in 95% uh, of cases, sequential seeding, uh, so the, the blue dots, uh, was better than single stage seeding, uh, so the red line, uh, allowing the process to activate on average 30, 13% more nodes, uh, more nodes, but the process lasted 11, 11 times longer. Uh, you have also the green dots, which is uh, additional uh, or one more version of sequential seeding with revival, but I won't talk about it. So if, if you are interested in, in that, please look at, at the paper. Or maybe we will have some time at the end. Uh, so uh, we, were a, we were able to be better in 95% uh, of the cases. However, we were wondering why uh, single state seeding uh, was able to be better in those 5% of cases. So <coughs> in our next paper, we have decided uh, to see what are the true limits uh, of the sequential seeding. Thus, first, uh, in collaboration with uh, mathematicians, we have developed a formal proof uh, that given the same conditions, sequential seeding will produce at least the same result as single state seeding. So single stage seeding, seeding cannot be better, never. Uh, next, 
knowing that we have not provided the same <clears throat> exactly the same conditions for both approaches in the first paper since independent cascade model is not deterministic model and there is some probability activation probability which is a random choice uh, so we couldn't uh, at that time uh, do that so we in for this paper we have developed a, a totally new approach to perform experiments when we are using spreading models which are <clears throat> not deterministic we have named this approach coordinated execution and basically in, in simple words in this approach for each network and each propagation probability uh, instead in simulation uh, throwing a dice and see whether we meet probability or not, we generate 10,000 networks. So for each network and each prop propagation probability, we, gener we generate 10,000 network instances by assigning a binary choice of propagation or not for each edge independently from A to B and B to A activation. So basically we create 10,000 networks where we already know the paths which the spreading can uh, proceed. Uh, finally, uh, we have compared sequential seeding due to the state of the art approaches. That is a greedy approach uh, proposed by Kempe and the maximum possible coverage we which we have been calculating for over six months, uh, taking into consideration every possible combination of seed, seed nodes. So we basically were iterating through all possible co uh, combination, uh, running the simulation and see the result to find the, the best possible combination of, of, of seeds. So, so we, can, we know what is our limit because <clears throat> uh, not, uh, in, in many cases, we are not just not able to activate all nodes in the network with, uh, uh, with a given number of seeds. So we just wanted to know uh, what are uh, our limits. So after that, we have uh, performed over 16 million simulations uh, and the results were as follows. Uh, firstly, 97% uh, of cases, in 97% of cases, sequential seeding uh, was better than single stage seeding and uh, never worse. So, <clears throat> so the single stage seeding was never better than uh, sequential seeding as the proof <coughs> or proof suggested. Uh, secondly, uh, sequential seeding, even with a simple, very simple, very easy to calculate uh, degree-based ranking, uh, was better than state of the art and extremely computationally ineffective greedy approach. And finally, in many cases, sequential seeding allow us to reach maximum possible uh, coverage which we could not do uh, with uh, traditional approach. So the, the blue line is traditional uh, approach and uh, uh, light blue uh, <coughs> are the sequential seeding rounds. And uh, as you can see in many cases, uh, this, they, those are various measures. So this is random degree and the greedy. Uh, we could uh, we could reach the maximum possible uh, coverage uh, in the network. Uh, going further in our most recent study, uh, we have evaluated sequential seeding in multi-layered networks. Uh, <clears throat> that is networks where we can uh, have many different relations between uh, people. So so the network have have layers and uh, each layer reflects one type of, of relation. So for example, this can be friendship, this can be co-worker ties, this can be co-authorship network or in, for example, social media case or so, social networking side, this could, could be our relations 
at Facebook, this could be our relations and at Twitter, and this could be our relations at, uh, I don't know, TikTok or, or some other uh, social media sites. So we can have many layers and um, the advantage of this type of networks is that they better reflect uh, real case scenario because in real life, we don't have just one type of relation with one person, but we, they, they vary. Uh, and of course, because of that, they uh, they have different in in intensity. For example, uh, the family ties are much stronger than friendship, and friendship ties are much str much stronger than co-workers relationships, or or some I don't know relations at the gym or, or something like uh, like that. Uh, so, uh, similarly to our previous study, we have uh, designed and run a number of experiments. The experiments have been performed using uh, Multinet uh, R library and independent cascade model with nine different propagation probabilities for our independent cascade model. Uh, 10 multi layered networks, uh, four real networks, three networks. Uh, we three networks, uh, six artificial networks, in which three of them were uh, Erdo Shereni network, and uh, three other was free scale free networks, and for dif uh, four different seed counts uh, or seeding budgets, allowing to activate two, five, ten, or twenty percent of the network. And we have used three different seed selection strategies or, or measures to rank our seeds. Uh, in this case, it was multi-layer degree centrality, multi-layer neighborhood size, and random seed selection as a, as a let's say, a, a control. And here we can, uh, we have the comparison between sequential seeding and single stage seeding for all simulation. And uh, the blue color indicates the gain. So how much more actors have been activated by sequential seeding? Uh, actors in multi-layered networks uh, is a person. It's just a person because uh, I, I won't go into details, but uh, just saying that actors is the same as a person. It's just called uh, actors in, in this kind of network. So, uh, so the gain is how much more actors have been activated by sequential seeding in comparison with uh, single stage seeding. So, for example, here uh, using sequential seeding approach, we were able to activate 30% uh, more nodes or actors than in single stage seeding. And as in case of our previous study, uh, with simple uh, single layered networks, also in multi layered networks, sequential seeding always achieved at least the same result as uh, sing single stage seeding. And in 74% of cases, we were better. Uh, in 26% of cases, we had the same result. So, uh, going further in, in this study, what, what was uh, specific for this study, uh, we also looked at uh, how much resources or how much our budget or how much our money uh, sequential seeding allow us to save. So basically how much we save. And the co orange color uh, indicates how large percent of our seeding, of our seeding budget, have not been used after activating all possible nodes in the network. And as we can, we can see here, in 32% of all cases, we have been able to save some uh, seeding budget, <clears throat> and half of that cases were both uh, approaches have been able to activate all possible nodes in the network. So even if uh, sequential seeding has the same result on a single stage seeding, um, it basically uh, do that cheaper. Uh, 
so meaning, so I mean that we are able to activate all possible nodes in the network, but cheaper. <clears throat> and this can be, for example, very beneficial for uh, companies with limited advertising budget. <clears throat> However, uh, as uh, it was the case with single ne uh, layer networks, uh, the higher coverage and saving of sequential seeding comes with the price. Uh, using sequential seeding results in much longer uh, spreading process. So the green dots show you how much uh, time, how much more time we use uh, for the spreading process. And on average, sequential seeding takes around uh, nine times uh, longer than uh, single state seeding. And this can be important for spreading campaigns with uh, some fixed deadlines. Uh, for example, presidential election. So we have fixed deadline where the election takes place and uh, no one cares whether we will convince someone after the election uh, we need to convince enough people before the election and we don't care whether later on we, we convince more or not. So uh, that might be important in, uh, in those cases. Uh, also, uh, also, please note um, that uh, the longer spreading process uh, occurs only in those cases where we gain something. So, for example, so as you can see here, we here the process takes longer and we gain something. So, the blue dots beneath here, uh, the process uh, doesn't take much longer and the results are, are, are the same. So, it takes longer, but we gain something. Uh, and finally, the last and most complicated study I would like to present is the evaluation of sequential seeding uh, in temporal networks. Those networks are, let's say, the best uh, representation of social networks since as our relation uh, between, uh, between people, as a relation be between uh, people, uh, those networks also change in time. Uh, so new relation can appear, but the old one not maintained can vanish. vanish. So this is like in real life. Yeah? Uh, we can meet new people, start new friendship, and the old friendship can vanish or die out, for example, because someone moved out or because we have different views or something like that. And, and because of that, in case of this network, uh, our previous proof that sequential seeding will always yield at least the same result uh, does not work since the network is changing. And we can imagine the worst case scenario where we, for example, have a conference or, or for example, medical conference, uh, and we have medical company which would like to advertise uh, a new, new drug. For them, it might be better to use single stage seeding to reach as many people as possible during the conference. So imagine that this is time during the conference. Since after the conference, uh, attenders can uh, stop maintaining relation uh, and uh, gradually those relation, uh, those relation will vanish. And there will be no network in which sequential seeding can kick in. And uh, we have no relation uh, through which we can convince our, our, our neighbor and communicate uh, something. So we cannot activate uh, them. So uh, to evaluate this, uh, we have once again designed and performed a number of experiments experiments and we find out that uh, in 74 percent of cases uh, so this where is my mouse so in this uh, green box uh, in 70 percent of cases the sequential seeding was better than single state seeding 
giving us on average 8% more activated users. While in 26% of cases, single stage seeding was uh, better. Uh, we start to look deeper into that, and we found out that the only variable uh, which influenced the performance of sequential seeding was, in fact, the activation probability of independent cascade model, where for extremely uh, low activation probably probabilities, so this uh, blue box you can see, uh, this, here is a average gain, so uh, this is zero, and here, for example, 10 means that uh, we were able to activate 10% more. Um, and here would be probably around 8% less. Um, uh, so for extremely low activation probabilities, the single state seeding uh, performed better. Uh, thus, uh, we do not recommend using sequential seeding in campaigns where we know that, for example, the chance of convincing someone is very low. Uh, in that case, it is better to use single state seeding since initial large number of seeds have better chances to uh, convince the rest of the network before the network changes uh, too much and we lose some correct uh, relation through which we can propagate our, uh, our message. Uh, so, summing up uh, my talk, uh, I would like you to remember from this talk just, just three things. So, first, uh, sequential seeding all, all, almost always produces at least the same results as a single state seeding in terms of the total number of uh, activated nodes. Secondly, the sequential seeding usually allows us to save some seeding budget. And thirdly, finally, with some uh, with sequential seeding, the spreading process lasts longer, which is uh, especially, which especially influences uh, temporal networks. At the end, I would like to thank my collaborators, Professor Radosław Michalski, Professor Jarosław Jankowski, Professor Przemysław Kazienko, uh, Professor Bolesław Szymański, uh, Professor Amanda Alamishi. Professor Tomasz Kajdanowicz and Professor Martin Vaniek, with whom I collaborated on, uh, on that topic. And if you would like to dive deeper into sequential seeding, I recommend to review our papers on that topic, since today I have only presented selected parts of the research uh, we have done on, on that topic, and there is much, much more and in much, much more detail. So if you are uh, interested, go ahead and, and check it. And finally, thank you for listening. Uh, if you are interested in more results, please see our papers. All of them are available on archive, so are free, freely available. Uh, what is more, if we can, we make uh, code and data available on GitHub or CodeOcean. So you can easily reprodu reproduce all our results and you can easily start working on that topic uh, yourself and take research on sequential seeding to the uh, next level. And if you have any question, you can ask them now or send them later to me via email or, or ask on the uh, chat if it's uh, available. Thank you.